let's go ruchira yo la good evening everyone this is ruchira and i welcome you all for our today's conversation hope you all are doing well and amazing so as you all know this year we are celebrating the birth century of late ak lakshman and we are planning a number of programs and events on the occasion last friday we started with the series called conversing with the common man and in this series we will be bringing many guest speakers for you they will talk about their expert areas and also about their association with ak lakshman i'm sure this will be a great learning experience for all of us in our first episode we had bharat taborkar sir with us he gave us a right to a creative world down those lanes there were all inspiring and motivating stories and a number of learning experiences if you haven't watched it yet then please watch it after the session gets over today in the second episode of conversing with common man we have we are honored to have none other than padma vibhushan dr r chidambaram sir with us welcome sir thank you so i know including me we all are eager to listen to him so let me invite usha aunty to introduce our special guest over to you usha aunty welcome dr chidambaram um it's indeed a pleasure to have you on board on the second episode of conversing with the common man on our lakshman legacy social media platform uh if you could allow me i'll just say a few words about you it will not take very long uh dr rajagopala chidambaram as famously called dr r chidambaram is one of india's leading physicists he became the director of the baba atomic research center barc in the year 1990 he was chairman atomic energy commission from the year 1993 to 2000 he was the principal scientific advisor to the government of india and the chairman of the scientific advisory committee to the cabinet from 2001 to 2018 he is presently the dean homi baba professor in barc he had a key role in many nuclear programs dr chidambaram has made important contributions to many aspects of our nuclear technology he has dsc degrees from 30 universities from india and abroad he has more 200 research publications in research journals and all his research work has been in india in the 70s he played a key role in the smiling buddha project leading to india's first successful nuclear weapons test on may 18 1974 at pokhran he was the architect of operation shakti the country's second successful nuclear weapons test at pokhran on may 11 and may 15 in the year 1998 this experiment also tested india's first thermonuclear bomb which is a hydrogen bomb dr chidambaram is a fellow of all the major science academies in india and also of the national academy of engineering and the world academy of sciences christi italy he has received many awards and honors notable among them are the cv roman cv roman book centenary award of the indian science congress association in 1993 the distinguished material scientist of the year award of the material research society of india in 1996 rnd the sorry rd birla award of the indian science association in 1996 Homi Baba Lifetime Achievement Award of Indian Nuclear Society 2006 the Lifetime Achievement Award of Indian Nuclear Academy of Engineering 2009 and the CV Raman Medal of Indian National Institute Academy 2013 Lifetime Achievement Award of Indian Academy of Sciences 2014 Lifetime Achievement Award of the Council of Power Utilities 2014 Dr Chidambaram was also awarded the Padma Vibhushan the second highest civilian award in India in the year 1999 with all these achievements and accolades to his credit i would like to bestow upon him a title the most humble human being and uh, and an interesting speaker besides holding a dynamic pose let us all listen to this genius uh believe me it's going to be a mesmerizing evening for all of us so doctor welcome to the lakshman legacy platform to celebrate the start of of 100th birth anniversary of tatanis lakshmi arkelakshmi 
Thank you. Thank you, Ushaji. It's a pleasure to participate in this uh, centenary celebration of the great uh, Arki Lakshman. Yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ruchira, over here. Thank you, thank you, Usha Aunty, for introducing him, and thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Uh, so, without wasting time, I would like to ask you: uh, in this conversation with a common man, my very first question to you is: When and how did you get introduced to this creator of common man? I mean, Arke Lakshman, and what was his first impression on you? And do you remember your first interaction with him? Yeah, I met him in uh, Doctor uh, Raja Raja Ramanna's house. Raja Ramana was uh, the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission at that time, and he and Mr. R. K. Lakshman both are from Mysore. And I think uh, there was a dinner party in uh, Dr. Ramana's house, and both of us happened to be there. And uh, that is the first time, first time I I met him. Uh, of course, I, I had seen his name. I've been looking at his cartoons for a very very long time. But uh, uh, my first impression, if you ask me, was of a very pleasant and smiling person, smiling all the time, and joking with people around him. Of course, at that time I didn't uh, uh, know him very well. It was much later that I got to know him, and it so happens that uh, my wife also got to know Mrs. Kamala Lakshman. Uh, through the Mahalakshmi Ladies Club, and in fact, Mrs. Uh, Kamala Lakshman uh, was the president of the uh, the president of the club, and which was started by her mother. I understand the Mahalakshmi Club was started by Mrs. Lakshman's uh, mother. So then we got together. He has often come to our house, and we met more often after the '98 test because at the beyond that we. Met rather frequently. They have come to our house, and we have gone to their house in Bolabai, Desai Road, and later, much later, in uh, Pune also, I have met them. Uh, so that is how uh, that is how it evolved. Yes, Rachira, I am done. Okay. So, um, sir, my next question to you is. Are there any memorable stories from your meetings, or any stories which you witnessed or heard, and would love to share with us? Any anecdotes you you remember? See, the most uh, most interesting episode episode was, you know, after the you know, after the Pokhran test in May ninety eight next month, hmm. there was a meeting of the uh, executive committee of the International Union of Crystallography. Okay. Crystallography was my one of my research areas, and uh, it has nothing to do with nuclear weapons. And uh, they denied me. The, they denied me the visa. Hmm. And on that, uh, Mr. R. K. Lakshman had uh, uh, made a cartoon, and actually he presented it to me uh, hmm. later. Yes. And uh, this is the U.S. Consul General's office. Hmm. And there is a very well dressed, the visual, uh, suited gentleman sitting in the consulate sofa. Yes. And the consul peeps out and tells his assistant that this man is only a, some kind of a racketeer. He is not a scientist. <laughs> you can give the visa to him. Yes. And, uh, and then he told me, Mr. Lakshman told me that. Uh, the consul also wanted it, uh, wanted that original. You know, Mr. Lakshman's habit was to give away the original yeah. cartoon to his friends, yeah. give it away to whomever he liked. Yeah. And but he said, "I have already decided to give it to uh, give it to Chidambaram." But to be fair, you know, hmm. uh, uh, afterwards the U.S. ambassador said that it was a mistake. Because the International Union of Crystallography hmm. is a member of the International Council of Science. Right. I was the vice president of that, and you cannot deny, according to the rule, you cannot deny visa to a person who has to attend that committee. Right. And and to uh, to add to it, I have been to U.S. Uh, hmm. uh, 
um, several times after that. So that was a kind of an uh, kind of uh, aberration. But hmm. this uh, this uh, cartoon was devastating, you know, the yes. way. Well, that is the way all Lakshman's cartoons were, you know, could bring out the the essence of the whole thing in just one statement by somebody in the hmm. in the cartoon. Yes. Yes, Ruchira. Yes. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so, uh, Fari, are there any questions? Um, so, basically, I have this uh, cartoon that Chidambaram uh, yeah. Sarah was talking about, talking about. Yes. So, I think it would bring a lot of fond memories. Yes. I, I, I didn't get so that. I didn't get the question, please. It's a comment. No, it wasn't a question. Yeah, he was sharing uh, this picture only. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, sir, you you were family friends, uh, and uh, can you share your experience with him as a person? Like, how was his relationship with your family? Any particular incidents with your family members which you would like to share with us? See, one thing I I remember very well is uh, he was fond of children. Hmm. You know, Mr. Lakshman was fond of children, and uh, my granddaughter Ria, and uh, she was a very small girl at that time. And uh, of course, you have mentioned only about the the common man. Yeah. Uh, he was also fond of animals, particularly the crow. Yes. And uh, his wife has once told a reporter, hmm. he is fond of the crow because not only it's a beautiful uh, bird, hmm. but it is also very intelligent, which is of course uh, very correct. Yes, intelligence almost uh, uh, reaches out to near the one of the apes there. Yes, and he drew a beautiful crow picture to her. Hmm. And my granddaughter also connected to him, uh, connected to him uh, very, very fast. Okay. And at the same time, he uh, drew the picture of the common man, hmm. common man for me, which I have kept. Hmm. And the remarkable thing is, he sketched it so fast. Yes. His sketching was so fast. And uh, as we all know, when he was uh, when he was young. His school days, and uh, he was not fond of anything else except drawing. Yes, you know if you mm -hmm. read, uh, if you see other people's cartoons, mm. they have to mention who the character is before you can recognize him. Right. But in the case of R.K. Lakshman, the moment you see it, you know who mm -hmm. the character. Is. Mm. And he had this very interesting habit. You know, he's uh, not a habit. His yes. skill, if the person is growing, his height will begin to change. Mm. And as the person's, uh, you know, reputation is going down, he will begin to go down in size. <laughs> so it's a pretty remarkable, uh, yes. remarkable uh, cartoonist. Yes. Uh, and, and of course, you know, uh, in his uh, autobiography, yes. uh, the tunnel of time. Hmm. He jokingly says, I searched for the common man everywhere. Hmm. And he went around crowds and asked them, are you a common man? <laughs> Everybody said, no, I'm not a common man. I have something unusual. Okay. Finally, R.K. Lakshman says, the common man found me. Yes. And uh, the common man represents the people of India. Yeah. And then if you look at it, if you look at uh, the common man, no, he is very simple. Hmm. He is very keen observer. Yes. And he eavesdrops on what things are going on. True. And he looks hmm. at and he hears everything with a bewildered look. Hmm. Bewildered look. So Lakshman used to say he's alter ego of the of the people of India. Yes. The people of India, they want to know what is happening around. And they are surprised that these things are not happening the way they want. 
Yes. And that comes out uh, beautifully, beautifully in the common uh, common man. And I must add here that you know, in my uh, in my family, we used to buy the Times of India hmm. only because of you said it. That is the cartoon of Lakshman. Yes. The very first thing you would do is to uh, open the newspaper to read, the, see the cartoon. Yeah. And I think many many people in India. Who bought the Times of India for the sake of yes, the cartoon of the cartoon of the of the common man? Yes, yes Ruchira. Thank you so much, sir. Harry, are there any questions from um, the uh, from the audience? So basically, I don't think there is a question from the audience, but I have a question. Yes. Please. So, uh, sir, you would have uh, you are the scientific advisor for the government of India. So you would have worked on a lot of uh, projects for the government and everything. So working with the government and everything, what would you think Lakshman sir's take would be on today's political and social trends that are happening right now? See, I worked with many prime ministers, and uh, you know, I started with Prime Minister Vajpayee, yes, and ten years with uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and then. Uh, afterwards with Prime Minister Narendra, Narendra Modi. Yeah. But you know, as far as science was concerned, uh, they were all, uh, they were all supportive. They were all supportive of science. And uh, of course, this is true from the time of Pandit, Pandit Nehru. Uh, he knew that India can grow only through science and technology from the, from the early days. Without science and technology, India, India cannot develop, and uh, the mandate of the the principal scientific advisor is in a way very wide. Right. Now, if you look at it, the scientific business of the government hmm. has been divided into many departments. There is a department of atomic energy, the department of space, there is a department of science and technology, department of biotechnology, there is the council of scientific and industrial research (CSIR). But what, the, at least in my time, what we were uh, looking at is there are things which fall in nobody's territory. Right. And, uh, there are things which fall in many territories. For example, you take what do you, whose territory is it to attracting young, talented people to careers in science? That is right. everybody's right. business. Right. Everybody's right. business. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, Hari, you want to add something or can I continue? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to add something. So, uh, my question is based on what would be Lakshman sir's reaction to the current social and political trends? Today's social and political trends. So you see, if you look at it, if you look at this, uh, um, as you all know, hmm. uh, Lakshman was a, a political satirist. You know, satire? Yes. Satire is uh, uh, can be done in words. It can be in journals. It can be in uh, poems. There are even uh, satirical uh, movies. Yes. Uh, and cartoon is one of the best mediums of uh, of satire. And uh, you know, you find <laughs> there is something wrong in the political system or with somewhere. And the best way to express this is through a uh, through a cartoon. But you know there is a famous saying: a picture is worth a thousand words. True. Sure. And even in science, uh, if you add a figure or a graph, then it puts across the results of experiments much better than only textual uh, textual writing. Mm -hmm. And, and you, he had uh, Lakshman had the knack of uh, picking out the current issue. For example, you take mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. A cartoon of uh, RKL, uh, a minister, a minister saying, mm -hmm. uh, "Yes, I agree. We must teach English, mm -hmm. but it should be taught in the regional languages." You know, <laughs> the absurdity of the of the whole thing. Yes. And or or there are other statements, you know. Yes. 
and, and used to show ministers of a rather uh, substantial size. Hmm. And in those days, the Gandhi cap was uh, was, was always there. Hmm. A minister telling a colleague, uh, yes, I said there is no unrest in the country, there is no crisis, there is no unemployment. Hmm. But you don't really think people believe all that. They only okay. know it is a speech, you know. And okay. that you can say it of uh, many leaders, not only in the government, but in the opposition also. Hmm. Whatever cartoons he has said, the, the essence of it hmm. can, can be there, you can interpret it. Of course, we have, of course we have excellent uh, political leaders, there is no question of that. Right. But very, uh, very often, you know, sometimes they just read out speeches written by somebody else, <laughs> even today. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and there is one cartoon by, by R.K. Lakshman, when the audience jeers after his speech, hmm. points out to his secretary and says, don't jeer at me, jeer at him. He is the guy who wrote the speech. <laughs> you know, the absurdity <laughs> of it has not, uh, he didn't uh, realize. But you must remember, a cartoon is a caricature. Right. It is a method of exaggerating, you know, yes. putting across a point through exaggeration. Yes. And uh, making sure that the that the point he wants to make has got uh, impact. Yes. And yes. Uh, that is why he himself has said, uh, yes. Lakshman himself in his I think autobiography or somewhere else, he has said cartoon is a Graphical satire, you know, graphical satire. You have to, and but one good thing about you could see through his things. He never said anything with any venom or prejudice. Yes. He only wanted to improve the conditions of uh, conditions in India. Yes. Putting across a man, and you see when he's putting across a man, putting across the the viewpoint of the common man. That is what what. Yes. The common man out, and I'm sure the message he conveyed um, reached everybody, and uh, and uh, I'm sure it had an impact. And some of those things have got kind of perennial value because you know, even without intention, sometimes uh, some mistakes can be made. And it's a job of uh, all of us, particularly the uh, satirist, to, of course, you know, if you look at uh, uh, people like George Orwell, it was not the view of R.K. Lakshman, I'm sure. Yeah. George Orwell defines satire as the revenge of the intellectual on the privileged or those in power. I don't think Lakshman ever uh, thought of it in that sense. He thought of it in a positive sense. And he loved India, as you know, yes. to uh, look at uh, his writings and sayings. You may, you, do, do you know that uh, for a few months he went away to London on a holiday? Yeah. Yes. And even then he was publishing his cartoons. And I think the cartoons were uh, titled Cartoons from Abroad. And uh, people there wanted him, they offered him a job in London. Yeah. He said, no, I want to go back to India. I love India. And the most funny things happen only in India. What are you dull guys wearing your identical suits, moving around? There's no fun here. India yeah. is the place for enjoying. <laughs> yeah, the place for all criticism. <laughs> you have to enjoy, you know, it's a lovely country. And yes. he agreed with he agreed with so, yes, so I am done. Yeah, so in continuation of what Fari was asking, so yes. now do you miss RK Lakshman and his cartoons? And according to you, who is the next best cartoonist? <laughs> no, you, honestly, I am not a specialist hmm. in uh, this to make a significant comment. You know, before Lakshman's time, there were uh, uh, I used to read Punch, you know, Punch was a British. Yes, the whole it was a satirical magazine, and then we had Shankar's Weekly. Yeah, Shankar Pillay's uh, Weekly, 
and uh, that Shankar himself was a cartoonist, but it did help to develop cartoonists like uh, Abu Abraham yes. and Vijayan and uh, so on. But today, if you go on the web and search and uh, search for famous cartoonists, famous cartoonists, RK Lakshman comes on top. Yes, I just did that Google right now, and uh, right Lakshman sir is on top. <laughs> he's, he's on top, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, he, was a, he was a unique, uh, he yes. was a unique uh, person. Yes. And uh, for sixty years, fifty more than fifty years, sixty years. Sixty years. And, and the funny thing somebody had noticed was the common man has remained the same, even though. Mr. Lakshman aged, as we all age. Common man didn't change. He remained the same for 50 years. True. <laughs> the same wisp of hair, the same bewildered look, True. and so on. <laughs> uh, one question I'd like, like to uh, address, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as you said, the common, uh, I believe there were people who used to ask him, about the common man, uh, will he grow older than what he is? And you would say, no, I can't make him older. If I make him older, he will die. But if I if can't make him older than that, then you know he cannot survive. I have made him the yeah. ultimate. <laughs> and uh, and another question, um, the doctor. Uh, we all know that uh, um, Dad, Mr. Lakshman, has done cartoons, uh, and you know he's touched upon every subject. And uh, whenever he has spoken to you. I mean, has he ever like talked to you about your subject, your area of, uh, you know, the subject that uh, yeah. you know has he discussed? Would like you to share uh, that with us? Yeah. No, I, I, this was the cartoon that was very scientific. When you know, what we discussed already. Okay. About after the Pokhran test, and uh, one beautiful cartoon that was when my very uh, very young days. Hmm. You know, when we talk of our, of our founder, Dr. Homi Baba, yes. I always say he was a man with great technology foresight. Right. You know, technology foresight is looking later and deciding what will be the technologies which will be valuable for the country in the long term. Hmm. And uh, that is how he decided on nuclear energy, Homi Baba. And he thought of uh, building nuclear reactors at a time when we were not even building uh, bicycles uh, indigenously. Mm -hmm. You know, the kind of courage and self-confidence, not just in yourself, but in Indians in general, that he had. I have a feeling that R.K. Lakshman shared this feeling. Because, you know, when we built our first nuclear reactor, Apsara, mm -hmm. which was commissioned in 1957, uh, Mr. Lakshman drew a cartoon mm -hmm. in which uh, some of the nuclear components were get were moving into bark in a bullock cart. In a bullock cart, you know, they look at the contrast. Right. It is a nuclear reactor, but the method of transport is still the bullock cart. But the beauty of the cartoon was the wheels of the bullock cart were atomic orbits. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they are showing that. Yes. <laughs> you know, everything is here. Firstly, yeah. some component which is moving, and the wheels have been put aside. The wheels have been put aside, and it is atomic orbits. And the cow looks distressed, as you can see. Yes. So he can bring expression. Amazing how he can bring uh, just by one stroke of his uh, pen, he can put in uh, put an expression. Of course, as you may know, uh, we have a journal of uh, science education published by the Indian Academy of Sciences. Yes. It is called Resonance. Okay. It's called Resonance. Started in 1996. Hmm. And uh, for several years, uh, R.K. Lakshman drew a cartoon for that in every issue. I see. It used, The title was science smiles that yeah. is the title of the series of series of cartoons which he wrote and i of course he used to poke fun at scientists also hmm. in those cartoons yes 
and there is a fellow who is jumping with joy and saying i found the cure for a important disease uh, and then he adds but of course the disease has yet to come to the world you know <laughs> that kind of <laughs> and, and there is a there is one very smiling happy scientist and in his drawing room a huge ape is sitting there huge ape hmm. and he has a visitor who is obviously very scared at the ape right so the ape is dressed properly the ape is not just sitting there and the smiling scientist tells his uh, visitor you know when i was chairman of the save the jungle movement save the jungle movement the tribals presented him to me and at that time he was 2 feet old now he was 8 feet giant who was sitting there and the scientist is quite happy and you know he can mix politics and science you are asking in a uh, i think uh, fairy you are asking but here is one good example of uh, he says uh, somebody some guy some obviously a biologist looking into his microscope and looking at bacteria mm-hmm. and he is uh, telling his uh, um, colleague this group this type of bacteria has got great political sense <laughs> they split <laughs> they fight and then they regroup <laughs> and then they split and then they fight you know just like yes. the political yes i think these this, this bacteria yeah. have great political political sense <laughs> so yes, i think we've uh, seen that one before yeah. i think we've used it in one of our uh, it's on our instagram page too i think oh i see very good that was very famous i love one. i remember of course he has made uh, so many others he making fun of the scientist yeah uh, there yeah. is uh, there is one space scientist who is preparing his rocket for launch yeah mm-hmm. and uh, in all that there are traffic lights around it yes you said that yeah <laughs> he is telling his space you know this the outer space is getting crowded so i'm attaching the yeah yeah clear the way for my rocket yes yes so, so what was his take on nuclear power sorry what was his take on nuclear nuclear power honestly i don't remember if you remember anything you tell me i can uh, he was obviously a great friend of dr amanna huh. he was very positive hmm. and i remember he came to, when he came to my house just his cat hmm. into a mushroom cloud in no time you know mushroom cloud coming out of the yeah huh. coming out of uh, yes i my guess from my conversation though we n- never directly discussed this subject was hmm was positive he wanted india to be strong right the nuclear deterrence Hmm. Okay, that turns I always said the greatest greatest advantage of recognized strength is that you don't have to use it. That's the principle of deterrence. Right. Not that anybody wants to use nuclear weapons. Yes. But you know, I think uh, I can't tell you any slide. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, I, sir, but I think I have something from May 1974 called the nuclear <laughs> touchdown. I'll just flash. Uh-huh. Can you yeah. show me? Uh, ha, ha, mushroom cloud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Presenting a book. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gandhi. Wow. Wow. Good. 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 thanks to his relationship with indira gandhi which is shown here yeah you could give we could get the clearance for the 1974 test which of course we did perfectly successfully yeah so we called it a peaceful nuclear explosion right but of course you know these were all contained nuclear explosions yes. you must remember that yes there is no mushroom cloud in that yeah but the message is mushroom cloud means a nuclear explosion that's why he spoke. of course he knew as well as anybody else 
Yes. That uh, this was a fully contained, both in 74 and the 98 explosions were fully contained. Any, any other uh, slides you have on, uh, <laughs> uh, on nuclear? I don't think I have any other slides on exactly nuclear, sir. <laughs> uh -huh. But of course, he was very fond of uh, science in, the, in that uh, every issue he had a cartoon on uh, yeah. on science smiles, science smiles. And uh, they, they had a very, very, uh, very strong, uh, strong <laughs> message. Yes. There is a man, you know, I remember that there's a man uh, uh, who is getting launched into space hmm. and his colleague tells him, please don't go, it is giant uh, butterfly I have been searching for for a long time. Yeah. Uh, please don't let him go. And, yes. and you know, now that you mention it, he had a very interesting slide on human cloning. Okay. You remember that one? Human cloning. There are two guys who are looking exactly alike and each yeah. that they are fighting and one says i am the original and the other says i am the original yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you could convert the you know human cloning is of course there are ethical ethical issues involved yeah different from just uh, genetic editing and uh, or genetic modification human cloning yeah. is sheep has been cloned but humans it brings in a yes of course, you can have robots and all that, <laughs> assistive robots. <laughs> not, yes. uh, uh, <laughs> so, yes. uh, just another question from the audience. So, Devangi Javeri is asking, Sir, what are the strengths children should have to be a part of Bach science fields? See, actually what we have is, uh, firstly, you know, what you should do, is uh, if a child is gifted in science, I think firstly it is the responsibility of the parent and the teachers to encourage science, encourage the talent over here. Of course, it is the responsibility of the child itself to maximize maximize his talent. That is the first step. Of course, where he joins is uh, nobody can plan the career so so well. And as long as you are gifted in science, you must stay in science. Of course, you are gifted in drawing, you must become a cartoonist like R.K. Lakshman did. Everybody, yes. that's what Einstein once said, you know. Everybody is a genius. Hmm. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will, live its whole life it will spend its whole thing. life thinking it is stupid, you know. Right. So everybody must do or must be encouraged to do, the system must also encourage. In fact, when I was uh, the principal scientific advisor, hmm. I had taken up a project in two places, University of Delhi and uh, uh, Niyas Bangalore, hmm. on how to identify and mentor gifted children. Okay. And among gifted, there are those who are pro profoundly <laughs> gifted. And there are those who are profoundly and selectively gifted. Like Srinivas hmm. Ramanujam, hmm. you know, up to 11th standard, he was first in his class. Yes. Then he's lost interest in everything except mathematics. Right. He failed twice in 11 plus 2, what we right. used to call the intermediate. Right. right. In Komogonam Arts College, he tried it in uh, in Pachepas College. That is the only man known to me who got a DSC from Cambridge after 11th pass. Nothing in between. True. No, no degrees, uh, no degrees in between. This is profoundly gifted in a very selected area. Yes. So you can compare him with R.K. Lakshman, profoundly gifted in drawing. That's why he was not very good in his studies. Huh? <laughs> R.K.L. was not very good in school in his studies because he was so concentrated on coming back to Bach. Hmm. Of course, uh, I'm talking, I've talked on science and mathematics, hmm. but we take people in all subjects, including a variety of uh, engineering, hmm. because nuclear science, uh, nuclear, nuclear science and technology is not just uh, one discipline. It is, it is physics, it's chemistry, it's biology, 
because you have to take care of the health of individuals is mechanical engineering designing reactors it's chemical engineering you have to make heavy water you have to mine the ore and process it and so on yes. so we have a bar training school which takes up talented people of course we examine them only in fundamental they are generalists and one year we train them in nuclear discipline right. so if they are good and you know it is not it, understanding they just the interviews we have of course we have a screening exam then we have a, then we have a, a interview and there we check how much he has understood the subject understanding a subject is somewhat different from getting marks now this is another issue we will not get into that on our okay. education education uh, policy and then they are selected given one years training and thereafter they have a guaranteed uh, career in the bhava atomic research center one of the other organizations of the department of atomic energy amazing so so i have another question from mr uh, sri ganesh he says i hope you can recollect the new york times cartoon on indian space programs that was brought out 3 years later both were simple cartoons any comments on this what is that cartoon do you remember Which it's one a, is a new york times I cartoon on indian space program i think mr sri ganesh is an ardent uh, lakshman sir fan yeah he has a collection of cartoons of uh, lakshman collection on the space program. of course we are uh, we are one of the leading countries in uh, countries in space mm-hmm. and that was you know as you know the space program was also started by dr homi baba mm-hmm. it was actually part of the department of atomic energy mm-hmm. and he had brought in vikram sarabhai for that and then they they branched out and vikram sarabhai had as much vision as uh, as baba baba had he was also chairman of the atomic energy commission for a very brief while after very tragic death of uh, dr humam homi baba in an uh, in an air accident yeah now of course uh, we have the capability to launch uh, satellites all our communications based on satellites yeah. and and then it's not just that they do remarkable things that remote sensing satellites uh, can do they can uh, make sure whether the, how the crops how the crops are growing they can see if the desert is advancing they can repeat uh, look at pictures they can uh, for example this for example they can even tell a fisherman which direction to go in order to catch to catch the the get the best fishing because they can see the shoal of fish moving in in a particular direction and they have an app for which reaches through a mobile it, and of course they have got uh, wonderful programs in order to yeah uh, space mission and gaganyaan they had chandrayaan chandrayaan 1 2 i don't yes, know sir. what the new york times uh, i think i think sari uh, he is explaining yes, that cartoon yes, yes uh, mr sri ganesh has commented saying that the cartoon show i it was about the mangalyaan mission Uh, the cartoon showed a farmer with a cow knocking at the door of a room marked Elite Space Club, where two men sit reading a newspaper on India's feet. Mm. The cartoon was carried with an article titled "India's Budget Mission to Mars." Mm. Last month, India successfully put Mangalyaan robotic probe into the orbit around Mars, yeah. October six, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Oh, you see the. Uh, it it was not critical of our mangalyaan mission was it from what you say it was positive or it was negative i think uh, it it is a positive it is a negative one since the new york times has apologized for it yeah. no because you know even america it happened when they first first put a man on the moon uh, so somebody asked president kennedy hmm why do you want to put a man on the moon when there is poverty in the appalachian mountains exactly <laughs> and kennedy replied if by not putting a man on the moon i can remove the poverty from the appalachian mountains <laughs> i would not put the man on the moon <laughs> uh, these are two different uh, yes 
yes. two very different yes. things. And now you know, I was telling you, hmm. farmers get benefit from our space uh, program. Yes. You know, early attack of pest on any crop. Yeah, you can sense it from a remote satellite, and one could uh, one could. But this yes. argument always uh, continues on. Uh, yeah. Uh, As you know, I always say also that uh, we sometimes forget that India is a very big country and our technology needs range from nuclear and space to rural. And these are all linked in a different way. Mm. If you want to have what is euphemistically called sustainable development, yes. even in nuclear, Nuclear, you think, is not electricity and weapons. It is medicine. It is agriculture. True. If you leakage in a dam, you put a bit of a radioisotope tracer. I can tell you where the dam is leaking. If you have a thyroid problem, I'll give you a glass of water containing radioactive iodine. You can take, take a scan and you can know whether your thyroid is working well or not. Yeah. Like that, you know, all these so-called... Once you have a very high level of capability, it gives you simultaneously capabilities which can be used in other areas of society. In fact, I sometimes used to say there is no area of societal activity and nuclear does not enter in one way or another. And one can always say of uh, space. Probably the webinar is happening because of the space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have met like this. <laughs> we, <did not> have. <laughs> <laughs> we would have, like, you know, uh, sit at home and then wait for uh, everything that, to get settled out. And but I will write you, I write you a letter and you will get a reply after four days because yeah. the postal system has also More than four down. days now. More than four days now. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. so just uh, another very interesting question which has popped up from Basanta Posabeto, who says, yeah. R.K. Lakshman's drawing contain minute details of scientific instruments. What is the secret behind it? I think he means to ask if Lakshman sir had an... Uh, had a knowledge about science and scientific instruments and everything. I think I think of course he was a very smart person to, to know what a microscope doesn't you doesn't you don't have to know hmm. uh, uh, how a microscope works. You know? Yeah. To picture a nuclear explosion, you don't have to know how a nuclear explosion works. But he knew that this is used for this purpose. He must have visited labs. Yeah. You know, if you have friends like Raja Ramana, hmm. uh, then obviously he must have visited. Though I may not be aware of it. Yeah. He must have visited Bach sometime or another. Yeah. I'm sure he must have visited. And he, he had a good understanding. You know, yeah. some of the, if you can write about the cloning, yeah. and uh, now that's a somewhat extreme... Uh, not uh, not easily understood uh, not easily understood subject human cloning human cloning is the the wicked one but i think he understood broadly obviously he was not a scientist right but i think he has a broad uh, appreciation of science and had a scientific uh, outlook and and the very fact he agrees to write a monthly card, you prepare a monthly cartoon for a journal of science education. You know, it was not a general journal right. for science education. Yes. So he wanted, uh, obviously, to contribute contribute to that uh, development. OK. Yes. Thank you, sir. And uh, now I'd like to ask uh, Usha, ma'am, since that question was uh, brought up, I'd like to ask you if if you have seen Lakshman sir do his daily work, how right. much of research uh, goes into uh, what what he does? True. And what he typically used to do about 30 to 35 newspapers uh, of India and abroad and derive mm -hmm. at the daily cart 
and and also uh, you know two cartoons besides the only cartoon were international cartoons but uh, when he came home he used to do a lot of freelance work every evening even after evening we have never seen him you know have any kind of research material in front of him to do this it was a spontaneous thing that he did for uh, uh, calendar work you know for um, which is like which used to be assigned uh, by different corporates uh, on different subjects so yeah. uh, that's the way we you know we used to just see him sketch free hand while talking to us he used to sketch and bring out his concepts just a live and once he used to finish let's say for example uh, 12 different sketches for a calendar from mm. 12 months as yeah. soon as it's done the first people who would get to see him who would call out and say come all of you i want to show you this and in detail he used to describe what it was all about so that was a very uh, you know enlightening experience uh, that you know we were really uh, yeah. happy about and we were really happy okay thank you so much ma'am I do have a question. One, one, one. Can I make a comment? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, there is a nice comment from your husband, Sinivas. Yeah. Sinivas yeah. says that uh, after Pokhran one, uh, he and his dad were taken around Bach by Doctor Raja Ramana. Yeah. So that uh, so he must have been, uh, and and Bach has everything, every pa, mm-hmm. every kind of uh, scientific discipline you can find in Bach. Yes. and i'm sure you must have seen the research reactor and then the the biology division the radio chemistry isotopes and and obviously whatever else he wanted to wanted to see yes yes go ahead go ahead please yeah yes. so yeah yes sir so ma'am so lakshman sir's uh, yeah. entirety of research came from reading 35 newspapers every day indian and abroad yes that's right Wow. Yeah. And that, <laughs> Ma'am in today. And uh, that's how I guess. Today we are finding it difficult to read one entire WhatsApp message on this phone, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> that is the situation Because we are facing today. I know, Reading I know. Uh, 35 newspapers every day is a very uphill task and making yeah. and having having you know the discipline to do that every day is amazingly incredible. Uh, the patience and yes. that that generation had uh, we all lack it unfortunately because we want everything to happen within few minutes or few seconds and uh, so i i wish you know the current generation go back to patience and consistency and concentration and uh, 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 doctor I, i just have one more question which i think has come from the uh, chat there's somebody who has asked if you were to connect science children and cartoons um you know uh, what would you like to say how to connect the three hari uh, uh, if you were to connect science cartoons and children how would you like to connect the three and what would you like to say <laughs> science cartoons and uh, by the way but uh, to uh, to for uh, for cartoons farish farish question you know mm. i'm sure uh, lakshman did what is called rapid reading yeah mm-hmm. if there is if you are smart enough you don't read everything true there is a method of scanning yeah that you read the whole thing and pause only yeah. on the things that interest you so you can do very rapid uh, rapid reading because he knew, you know he had an instinct for what would form an yeah. important subject for a for a cartoon yes not just some news about somebody enforcement directorate looking at this or um, ncb <laughs> looking at i think he would not bother about all that <laughs> he was looking so that can be done without uh, um, anyway to i'm sure children you can you know but um, but the only thing is a cartoon is a caricature Hmm. that is uh, at the time and it requires a little bit of life experience to understand the humor that it has been a kind of a, some point has been deliberately exaggerated to put the point uh, point across but in my opinion i may not be right of course 
that uh, you must at that stage scientific facts must be told to the children you sure. know we had the teachers day teachers day in, uh, very yeah. recently earlier uh, 5th of september 5th september no last month yeah yeah 5th september that was Ra radha krishnan president yeah. radha krishnan's uh, birthday yeah there the main thing for the child is to open his mind as they say let the child think for itself yes. that is the purpose of education not to fill him with facts alone True. of course the basic phenomenon uh, they must know but a cartoon can perhaps uh, increase the fascination for science for the child True. True. you know to read about an entire space mission or about a nuclear power plant yeah or about bacteria now if you can kind of stimulate the curiosity of the child through a cartoon yeah. but i'm not i'm just guessing i'm not able to so, so just just to, yeah just to add to this montessori uh, ma'am uh, she uh, today morning only i was reading one of her article and uh, in that article she said uh, you, we should not um, like for children we should uh, use cartoons to tell them facts instead of uh, you know showing them uh, 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 stories of dragons and uh, monsters and fairies it will <laughs> add value Was to it? that yeah today morning only i was reading this uh, oh, article I and now you brought this point <laughs> but it should be designed well yeah yeah uh, so, these are cartoons, very very yeah cartoons which are related with uh, current scenarios which are uh, related with uh, the um our day to day life and not uh, something which is totally fiction if you can do that i think it's a good idea good yeah. idea yeah so are there any uh, questions sari yes uh, first of all uh, what i feel about what uh, usha ma'am asked is the hmm. thing is every person before going towards a goal every person has a goal and there needs to be some trigger that triggers him to go towards the goal i think lakshman sir's uh, comics can be taken in like that if someone wants to do science or if someone wants to do music if you look at something about music that could inspire you True. something about art that could inspire you something about science that could inspire inspire everyone even even uh, let's say if you, if you are having a very bad mood some of lakshman sir's comics can bring a smile to your face it could inspire it could change your day yes True. so i think that is what we need to look at for in lakshman sir's comics Now, so, Fari, you uh, should distinguish between intellect and emotion. Yes, sir. So yeah, I, I, think, so, I think you are a little bit you are just getting mixed up here. So we uh, want to stimulate the intellect of the young child so, into uh, an area where the child has talent. Yes, yes, sir. Because you know, for university education, university education. Hmm. Alfred North Whitehead says, "Yeah, about university education. Age has experience. Thank Youth you. has imagination. The purpose of university education is you to transfer to knowledge without destroying creativity. Now, this is yeah. what science is about: creativity. True. Must allow them to think for themselves, as you know, this in science." you must hear everybody but you have to convince yourself you can don't accept anything at uh, at face value the greatest discoveries in science have been made by people who have not accepted the existing system of things true then only you can always make a new desk that comes the questioning mind and all children have that all children are a questioning mind sometimes the parents kind of try to suppress it and make him behave like every other child you know yeah. that if you carry it too much then it can destroy uh, creativity you know? yes so i can give yes, examples but i think we are drifting from rk lakshman <laughs> <laughs> yes sir uh, back to you ruchira okay 
so uh, sir i i want you to describe rk lakshman beyond his cartoons how will you describe him see the uh, let me take a statement from einstein hmm einstein was once asked what is it that makes a great scientist yes and his reply is interesting hmm he said the people think it is the intellect they are wrong it is the character no hmm. not, not that anybody can do science great science right but if you lack honesty and integrity you can never do great science right you can transfer this to any profession yes same thing yes the importance of uh, importance of uh, character and uh, i think uh, rk lakshman was a person of uh, great uh, character because he would tell in his cartoons what he feels what he feels and he wanted his independence i remember uh, in mm. his uh, autobiography tunnel of time i mentioned yes. when he was offered uh, padma bhushan of mm. course later he got padma vibhushan padma bhushan right. right and mrs gandhi had approved it mm. he hesitated yes because he wondered because he had been critical of mrs gandhi in his cartoons nothing special as you was critical of no, all political, political all political system yes so he had a fear that by offering him padma bhushan yes. whether the establishment is trying to buy him off <laughs> so he hesitated to accept it hmm but then he thought that his brother rk laksh rk narayan who was of course 15 years his senior yeah and he has a kind of drawn pictures for all his short stories and novels and essays and and all that had already got padma bhushan yeah and so he thought of his mother he, he felt his mother would be very happy if both her sons had padma bhushan so he agreed for that mm-hmm. padma bhushan you know the whole thought process that he describes is a, that of a person of uh, great character great character apart from his of his other qualities his drawing mm-hmm. skills and his very deep understanding see to draw a cartoon mm-hmm. you must go to the uh, the deep meaning behind behind it i mm-hmm. once i remember a cartoon ha huh. old days when you were getting imported wheat from america ha huh. because we had food scarcity okay a minister yeah. is looking outside in window it's beginning to rain hmm the minister tells his secretary now we can tell the americans to mind their own business <laughs> <laughs> we have we have it yes or many so many uh, so many other things a yeah. minister a minister telling his uh, colleague of course i have done irregularities mistakes hmm. and all that but all in the interest of the country you know what a, what a deep message is it of pretense yes. you are doing the wrong thing but you are pretending hmm. so that kind of uh, message yes. that is uh, probably what uh, my feeling about uh, rk rk lakshman uh, lakshman never compromised on yes. principles yes. is what i think yes sir. i yes. always thought of him as Absolutely. So, sir, how will you describe him in in one word or one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is what I mentioned. Huh. A person of great character and self belief. Right. He had a great belief in him. No, no doubt about that. He was a very confident uh, self. Hmm. You know, Swami Vivekananda, hundred years back, the great man yes. said. Yes. the old theology was you are an atheist you don't believe in god yes the new theology is you are an atheist if you don't believe in yourself right <laughs> so i think uh, rk lakshman if you want to was a person of uh, great ability great uh, satirist hmm cartoonist great uh, 
Yes. The Irish person of so, great uh, character. Yes. And the person yes. with great self belief. That's how I would probably describe him. Okay. Maybe I missed some qualities, but I think yeah, that's yeah. That, is the, yes. that is the essence of it. Yes. 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 So, Fari, yes. do you have uh, any question? Yes, I I have a question from uh, Saurav Anand. He says, hmm. I can't forget the cartoon by Laxman sir after Pokhran. He says, Clinton and Putin smoking cigars while standing on a large globe and telling our common man who just lit up his little cigarette that smoking is not allowed here. Did yeah. he consult with the Pokhran team before coming up with the idea? Did Laxman sir consult with the Pokhran team before coming up with this cartoon? Is it again, uh, Fari again quite follow yes. the, 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 the comparison. So it's basically Clinton and Putin who are uh, smoking cigars while standing standing on a large globe uh -huh. and telling the common man uh, to not smoke in that same place. <laughs> oh, that is, I think he was attacking the non-proliferation treaty. Yes. Uh, the NPT said the, we are the five anointed guys. Yeah. Who did the nuclear explosion before an arbitrary date? Of course, India yeah. never accepted. Yeah. Uh, did Laxman sir consult with the Pokhran team sir before coming up with this idea? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 of course, we didn't talk with anybody about <laughs> Pokhran too before the explosion. Correct. Yes. Uh, after that, of course, uh, very soon afterwards, you know, it is in a. Because May and June, that cartoon had, cartoon had come, cartoon had come by by June already. That of course everybody knew yes. after after the explosion. Okay, so I have another question from uh, Rajesh Rajesh Mandlik, who says, "How do you take R and D time, which is required to develop any technology? What is the quality that enables private sector?" to allot enough time for R&D? See, if you look at the complete R&D ecosystem, complete R&D ecosystem, see, let us see, uh, India of our dreams, India of our dreams, but you young guys, like the guy who asked you the question. Is in India which is economically developed, scientifically advanced, and militarily strong. And if you want to be scientifically advanced, you have to become a knowledge economy. The ability to develop new knowledge and the ability to appropriate knowledge developed anywhere in the world. Right. And you know, sometimes I, uh, I paraphrase Alvin Toffler. Hmm. Alvin Toffler, the great physiologist, once said, hmm. yesterday violence was power. Yes. Today wealth is power. Yeah. Tomorrow, knowledge will be power, which has already come to pass. Hmm. Why did you say yesterday violence was power? Whoever had the best technology for inflicting violence was the most powerful. Right. Why is wealth power? Whoever had the wealth to convert knowledge into technology, he was the most powerful. And of course, knowledge itself is the one that leads to... to hmm. To, te to technology. Yes. Now, I paraphrase Alvin Toffler to say, hmm. technology is power. Because Thank the source you. of all the things which Alvin Toffler mentions is technology. Technology yes. is built on knowledge, knowledge is based on science. Yes. So the ecosystem we are trying to develop in India requires excellence in basic research, which can usually be done only in universities and uh, in mission oriented labs. Right. Excellence in applied research, applied research that is convert that into value, hmm. knowledge into research, whatever you gain from research. And that is where industry comes in in a big way. And normally, of course, now, you know, with the, at one time, the Bell Labs was, the US was considered an idea factory. Yes. yes. Because they were also doing basic research. Yes. But with such good connectivity, even that is dying down, I am told. Because they are saying, let somebody anywhere develop new knowledge, 
it leaks through the information okay. system right electronic connectivity everywhere in the world so why do we bother we pick it up from that and that is where the industry has to do and that is why you have must have interaction between academic institutions and uh, industry in those interfaces in the chain research development and delivery industry good in delivery academics good in research both weak in development you have to create that interface which can transfer knowledge from here to there yes. and all this has to be backed by high quality manufacturing skills you must derive value from knowledge yes. whether it is societal value whether it is economic value whether it is a strategic value and india is moving towards that many things are happening in which nobody is aware fully of what is happening in the country yes. and so but we are moving forward yeah. the only thing is the young people must accelerate yes not that india is not nobody can stop india growing india will grow yes but we have to accelerate the velocity so how sir yes. how to accelerate this velocity that is why i said the first is get the best talent into science yes best talent into science hmm then you see industry must get interested in knowledge yes not just in technology transfer yes we must develop and we have made efforts in that direction example just to give you an uh, yes. give you an example uh, just before i left the yes. psa's office hmm. we were funding a project on advanced ultra supercritical thermal plant okay because you know even though we talk of clean energy we require uh, nuclear and renewables which are not greenhouse gas emitting next hmm. 30 years we are going to burn coal hmm but if we can raise the steam to 700 degrees plus for the same amount of uh, carbon dioxide that you produce you can produce more power relatively cleaner technology yes. and here uh, we have brought together a, a consortium of indira gandhi center for atomic research who are good in materials yeah dhcl we are good in uh, power engineering equipment manufacture ntpc who are probably the best power utility in india and this project is Is, is going fast. So many such, many such efforts are going on. Yes. We also encourage the IIT Madras to develop. We funded that. Yeah. Develop the world's best grinding machine tool, and they have done it. Yes. And because the project has been success, so successful, hmm. the Ministry of Heavy Industry has given a project to them on advanced manufacturing, some fifty hundred crore project. Okay. It doesn't projects interacting with the industry. Hmm. to develop some of the best uh, manufacturing systems in the world now we compete in the world of course we have the slogan atmanirbhar atmanirbharta of course we used to have an atomic energy self reliance at one time i defined self reliance as immunity from technology denial okay building immunity yeah. from technology denial Hmm. If you are building a complex system, if you want to import right. something from a reliable source, subsystem, go ahead and use it in the name of speeding up the project. But if anything is denied to you, including the proverbial wheel, hmm. just have the capability to do it yourself, make it yourself. True. That is True. ultimate atma nirbharta. True. <laughs> <laughs> so ruchira just one more thing uh, yeah so we are currently working with uh, another uh, organization called uh, youth online learning opportunities or a short they call themselves yolo mm. big shout out to them and they are helping people come out of uh, you know people who are facing um, who are having a hard time online regarding online safety and cyber crime and everything okay what would because uh, the the cyber crime in india have always been on the rise since uh, since all the social media platforms have started coming in what yeah. would you think uh, lakshman sir's uh, reaction would be to this see cyber security is a very 
very hot uh, very hot uh, subject today yeah yes and and uh, you know the criminals are also beginning to use artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and machine learning to attack yes. uh, the good people the good people yeah. i'm sure uh, mr lakshman would have made a very nice uh, <laughs> cartoon out of that yeah. we we'll say a crook uh, telling a good man he is uh, the the scientist will be saying i am heading a cyber security lab mm -hmm. over here and i have done uh, so many advanced uh, techniques in order to protect and i have tried it out on so many things and it works and the cyber criminal says no i have got all that data and i've used machine learning to penetrate your system <laughs> that would be my suggestion for an rkl cartoon <laughs> amazing <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we have done right now is uh, with our collaboration with uh, uh, yolo what we have done is we are creating cartoons in the style of lakshman sir for regarding online safety and cyber crime and everything so since you have given me an idea usually i write these contents <laughs> and then the artist draws since you have given me an idea i'll make a cartoon specifically <laughs> on what you have told me sir yes. <laughs> and the content credits will go to you yes. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that don't do that <laughs> i give ideas very freely though i got a lot of students also i give them ideas also <laughs> That's thank you so much sir back to you ruchira <laughs> yes thank you so sir i remember last time uh, when we met you were talking about uh, this sustainable development goals 2030 and then uh, you know um, you were talking about uh, tifac 2035 and uh, you are uh, because you you were associated with um, indian um, science programs and uh, you know you were advisor also to government you have been uh, active in this change part and you know you know bringing change is very difficult in society so yeah. i would really like to know you know what is your definition of change and who is the true change maker in your opinion and uh, how um, how cartoons can bring that change how art can bring that change and what is your take on that the cartoon is one method cartoon or satire more generally cartoon is satire graphic satire and yeah. uh, george orwell says in a democracy of course only in a democracy you can have cartoons in an autocracy all the cartoonists will be behind bars you know we are a democracy so we can uh, we have uh, we have all the every cartoon every satire is a tiny revolution in a democracy Yes, bring a small bit of change. It cannot bring uh, a revolutionary change. That only elections can do. <laughs> But, uh, but as we as we go along, as we go along on our path, and of course we are a wonderful, wonderful democracy. Yes. Of course, the democracy has its own uh, um, roadblocks. Slow us down. So slow is down, and you know. we have got uh, the ruling party in the opposition things opposition means you oppose everything which the ruling government yeah and it vice versa when the other guys come to power you do the do the same thing but it is uh, people of uh, people when uh, they do graphic satire hmm. the message uh, the message goes across you know it may very often be not uh, very visible but yeah. uh, the undesirable element in the system will know that uh, people are watching yes uh, the common man as he said represents the people of india yeah If the common man is bewildered or is not happy with uh, what is being done i'm sure the message would have would have gone but you will not be able to perceive because it's not a first order reaction you know right in the first transitions we have got a first order sudden change right i smells that's a first order reaction right <laughs> we have got a we have got second order first transition slowly yes change cartoons lead to slow transitions they cannot mm -hmm. lead to 
sudden sudden uh, transitions in the system. But the message is there. And you know, the advantage is repeatedly if the message goes. Hmm. Repeatedly. Yes. You see the uh, Lakshman's cartoons during the emergency. Hmm. Very powerful cartoons hmm. during the emergency period. Yes. I'm sure the message must have gone to everybody. Right. And it's not just to the leaders. It also goes to the people. Okay. You can't tolerate this kind of thing, you know. Right. To, to the people also goes, and that is how the changes are not uh, cannot be sudden, right? But they are slow, but they have a definite impact. Yes. And you see, since you are representing the emotions of the people, yeah, the, the cartoon is a fertile mechanism for inducing change. Suppose you are saying something the people don't believe in. Then of course, obviously, it cannot bring about any change. Right. People will, people will uh, reject it. Right. Or some of the ideas which somebody talks about complete. I mean, it has no relation to what is going on in India now. So yes. I don't think anybody will take uh, him or her seriously. True. So if you must be tuned, tuned to the political situation, expressing the feelings of the people. Yeah. And then you prepare the people at the same time, and then the change can come. That's what. Yes. So, so, what is your definition of change? <laughs> <laughs> you see, as a as a physicist, yes. As I I already told you on uh, on phase transitions, that is change. Hmm. Phase transition is a change. Water becomes steam. That's change. Right? Hmm. <laughs> or a crystal symmetry changes that is change. <laughs> uh, but change would, uh, would mean some character, some characteristic in the system must yeah. change, change drastically. Okay. That would be really okay. the meaning of change. Because you know, human is a human, you can't yes. uh, change, you can't change him. But you listen to somebody's yeah. lecture and the views on something changes. Well, that is change. Yeah. Of course, you can also yeah. get more confused by listening to a lecture. <laughs> True. <laughs> there, there was a, you know that the story of a great scientist okay. who went to listen to another scientist who was giving a talk on a subject which this man did not know much about. Okay. And after the talk, the first scientist told the other guy, hmm. you know, I was confused about the subject before your talk. Now I'm more confused. Now I'm more confused. <laughs> <laughs> so that should not be there. When you are right. trying to change, if you are looking at uh, positive, you don't want uh, yeah. confusion. Is not that yes. becomes entropy. Yes. Right. You know, in chemistry, you know enough chemistry to know about entropy. You know, yeah. which represents disorder in the system. Yes. Yes. See, if you do all kinds of nonsensical statements coming from many people, so that, that can create disorder in the system. Yeah. And, uh, nobody wants that, actually. We want orderly change, not True. just change. True. And that's what democracy is about. Yes. We, don't, we are not looking for change, which is a revolutionary type. Yes. Fortunately, India, in the years, in spite of all our small bickerings and this and that, no, we have preserved that democracy, that freedom, the ability to. And whenever we have made deviated, we have covered, corrected ourselves and come back to the, yes. the right path. The progress might have been a little slower than otherwise. Yes. Because I don't think anybody, you and I, want it any other way. Right. But in the same way, can we accelerate? Right. That should be the thing we should all look for, I guess. In change. So, so, so my last question is how common people can contribute to this change and how they can become a change maker. See, common you see the common man honestly hmm. are all patriotic. You don't have to uh, worry about uh, their uh, patriotism. Everybody is a uh, hmm. will have to assume their one. And yeah. they look and you know. That is what, who was the guy who said, Gandhi, I'm not so sure. Uh, 
don't wait for anybody to make the change yeah be the change gandhi ji or the change no yeah yeah so all of us must contribute this okay. covid times has done that yes some extent yes i, I think uh, we will uh, lit uh, clutter up our home and wait for the maid to come and clean it mm. True. now we don't clutter up the house because we know we have to clean it afterwards ourselves <laughs> true so, those are the things which are now getting uh, getting into our system yeah. conservation we have to people are realizing the impact and so many messages are also yeah so yeah. also going through and you know finally we want human development index in india to go high true human development index was defined by the united nations many years back yeah in terms of per capita gross national product life expectancy at birth and adult literacy yeah i have been saying for 20 years that you can define in terms of just two parameters per capita electricity consumption and female literacy yes i prefer female literacy to adult literacy because that's a measure not only of literacy but of equity and justice in that society yeah. if you find in india wherever the average literacy is lower the male literacy and female literacy difference is higher fortunately india is changing female yeah. illiteracy is going down female illiteracy true and you know liter female literacy correlates very strongly and inversely with birth rate yeah. and infant mortality yes yes and birth rate is coming down in india shortly and the birth rate in the present generation hmm. is much less than what it was two generations back True. in fact it is coming down to uh, to the replacement uh, fertility rate yes that is the one parameter in which thanks to all the programs that we have taken up uh, female literacy we must you know india cannot become a developed country unless we become near 100% literate without gender discrimination that's one part of it no. the second part is the per capita electricity consumption in india must go up five, five to six five times okay. six times okay because this i have written about it i won't go into the details yeah now obviously per capita gross national product is monotonically related to per capita electricity production yes more electricity you produce more is your industrial production but if you produce introduce any electricity producing system part will go to industry but part will also go to small towns and villages yes. they will get better drinking water better primary health care <coughs> and all this will help health parameters including the ultimate health parameter which is life expectancy at birth so india has to wait a little we are progressing and our energy production must go up very sharply this is what we are all trying to do mm-hmm. and at the same time take care of climate change threat which is happening because of global warming so all at the moment all forms of energy production are important for india with concentration on low low carbon emitting and yeah. your zero carbon emitters like uh, renewables nuclear hydro and carbon capture and storage and all that all this you see are all going to that is the change i want india and i'm sure you want india to be among the top 10 in the human development index true, true. that would be the ultimate and i'm sure rkl would also have wanted that <laughs> I just feel like listening to you. Keep on listening to you, but uh, I will stop here and I'll ask uh, Harry to continue. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining us today, sir. Uh, this, I think, this would be the last question, and uh, there's yes. no way anybody could come up with a better question than this. Yes. And uh, this question is from Saurabh Anand. He says, uh-huh. "Nuclear scientists are assumed to be serious people solving complex problems." it is so nice to see one from the group talk so passionately about satire and cartoons can we safely assume that scientists also enjoy a satire witty sarcasm as well as anyone else <laughs> the answer is yes the answer is of course yes 
I think scientists also enjoyed RKL's cartoons as much as uh, yeah, as much as anybody anybody else. I'm sure of that. I'm sure. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, sir. Back to you, Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Star, Ruchira, and Patty. Yes. So, um, Usha, Aunty, over to you. I mean, you know, listening to Sir is is always a blessing. He, uh, I I seriously feel like you know this session should not end, but uh, now is the time. I think we should, uh, like we should end here. So, Aunty, over to you. Um, uh, thank you, Doctor, for for this most uh, enlightening link that you have given us. And besides being uh, uh, giving having an expertise. in your own field you are able to touch upon every yeah. subject you know spanning across um, you know connecting with uh, lakshman's cartoons and uh, also sharing valued uh, messages uh, to uh, you know and positive messages for the younger generation and uh, of course i second so india uh, yeah. you know, on to- on top 10 on human development and uh, uh, you've been it's amazing to see how you were able to remember so many cartoons of lakshman mm-hmm. uh, vividly and be able to actually uh, clearly explain this and, and so articulate you were about you know bringing up touching upon each and every cartoons on subjects and you still re- and, uh, remember it i mean i really admire your uh, mem and uh, it's really nice and uh, 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 it's been a very enlightening evening and i would like to without taking too much time i would like to uh, end uh, this uh, you know thanking you and uh, conclude this by you quoting your very strong full statement and very touching statement that you have made which we now use it as a quote coming from uh, lakshman a person of great character and self belief So yes. thank you so much for being thank part you. of the second episode of conversing yes. with the command on Lakshman Legacy platform, and uh, we really hope that we would have more and more opportunities to interact with you and uh, yes. the younger generation get a benefit of that. Thank yes. you, thank you, Shaji. It was a great pleasure yes. Yes. talking to all of you, yes. and of course about the great man RKL. Yeah, yes. thank you. So so thank what about you and yeah. this uh, of uh, to wish a very happy birthday and many many happy returns for one other person who has been as close as you were to mr lakshman that is mr keshav mahendra today is his 95th birthday and uh, i would like to wish him uh, the best of everything and good health uh, okay. i hope this message will be conveyed to him through our uh, social media platform as we yeah. all know keshav mahendra is the a uh, non executive chairman of mahindra and mahindra group yeah uh, over to you rishi thank you thank you what a lovely discussion and lightning evening uh, it is always a treat to listen to chidambaram sir and uh, thank you so much sir for taking us on a wonderful trip down a memory lane and it was great learning experience for all of us and we all are taking a lot with us from this conversation and as auntie said we are really looking forward to have more discussions with you um so um uh, in third episode of conversing with common man we will be having ravish kumar ji joining us uh, ravish kumar ji is a magazines award winner uh, indian journalist author and media personality and he is the senior executive editor at uh, ndtv uh, cherry on the cake is um, after uh, rk lakshman sir got uh, his magazines award uh, after 35 years after that um, ravish uh, ravish ji got his magazines award and uh, they are the only two people from india uh, who are uh, journalists and they got magazines award so um for a change that interaction will be in hindi and uh, we uh, yeah it will be we we are hosting it on 17th of october <laughs> and that is on uh, saturday not friday uh, same time 6:30 pm and uh, if you are not following our social media handles yet then please follow us we are active on facebook instagram and twitter we are sharing our links in the comment section um, also write your feedbacks to us we are eagerly waiting for them uh, share it with your friends uh, for more interesting conversations and learning um, we have already launched one competition and it is from 4th to 18th of october 
and it has already started details are posted on our pages so uh, what are you waiting for come join us in this initiative and uh, participate connect with us uh, if you have any doubts um, we are part of this tribe your support and love is important to all of us so uh, just to summarize today's program today cheers is to all the scientific people over there to science smiles to accuracy to uh, hard work and to simplicity uh, to creativity in science to curiosity uh, bend of art and science uh, today cheers is to honesty and integrity and to the person's character uh, today cheers is to the man with the self belief and principles and of course passion to drive the change uh thank you so much once again sir uh, for being with us today and uh, thanks it all thank you rishira thank you thank you sir